Combat in Mortal Shell is unique, complex, and of course, punishing. With all good Souls-like games, there is a point in the combat where it just kind of like clicks and everything kind of makes sense. This happened for me with Mortal Shell the other day, so here is everything I have learned about the combat. All the four weapons have the same amount of combos, but with different animations and a different attack speed. So they all have a three swing heavy attack and a three swing light attack combo. The hammer and chisel, however, you can actually weave these light attack combos together as long as you have enough stamina. You can also perform a light light heavy combo to get the final swing of the heavy attack combination. The jump attack can be done by sprinting and heavy attacking or by pressing dodge and heavy attack at the same time. Either option will trigger the same animation. You can weave this attack into these combos to cover distance quickly if you do need to. I would recommend to use the dodge and heavy button press rather than sprint as sprint can be a little bit finicky when you're in the middle of combos it will break the combo. The four weapons all have their own strengths and weaknesses and unique weapon abilities. You can get these weapon ability upgrades from inside the dungeon that you find that weapon. So at the start of the dungeon when you click on the book to go unlock the weapon from hard earned you can actually get the weapon upgrades from that specific specific dungeon as well. So make sure you do explore and you find them when you're on your journey. The weapon abilities should be used as soon as you have the resolve because they are basically a free hit on any enemy. While you're using a weapon ability, you are invulnerable and a lot of the weapon abilities also have additional effects like poison or fire. It's actually one of the strengths of Solomon's Kid because he has so much resolve, you can spam as many weapon abilities as you have. If you do like a particular weapon, but you don't like its weapon abilities, what you can do is get fancy with it and mid combo switch to a different weapon, continue the combo that you're currently in, but you could also use that weapon's weapon abilities and then switch back. Throughout your playthrough, you'll find these unlimited use items which summon the weapons and they can be put onto your quick slot and used as often as you like. So you can switch between weapons freely. I've been doing this a lot with the hammer and chisel and the big mace for the AOE attacks. The big mace is really good for clearing enemies when I'm surrounded, but I prefer to use the hammer and chisel as my main weapon. The last little note about animations is that you can't cancel an attack animation with a dodge. You can trigger a dodge after the damage has landed for the attack, but you can't back out of any attack animations. This is a thing with all of Mortal Shell's animations is that once you've committed to the animation, you have to see it through. However, one of the strengths of Mortal Shell is obviously the hardening mechanic, which can be used during any animation. So you can get around this via this method. Now let's talk about hardening and evading. All shells have a dodge and roll ability with Teal having a special shadow dodge and roll which lasts just a little bit longer. During both a roll and a dodge, there are frames of invulnerability. I originally thought that this didn't happen for the roll specifically because it looks like the harden effect doesn't actually stay on your shell during the roll, but during my testing, it looks like you can't take damage during roll. I've been playing around with this and I can't seem to take damage mid roll. So it looks like roll itself as well as dodge both have invulnerability frames. I mostly use dodge anyway. It is a really good ability to sidestep enemies and most attacks you can just sidestep out of the way. Although roll is good if you do need to create distance from the enemy. Hardening is basically the block for Mortal Shell and it can take an unlimited amount of ranged attacks. You can stand in your Harden indefinitely taking ranged attacks as long as you like. The only thing that will break a Harden is a melee attack and it is also worth noting that you shouldn't break your Harden yourself unless you are trying to close the distance on a ranged enemy. You should always let the enemy break your Harden because it's very easy to miss time breaking this and take unnecessary damage. It's also worth noting that when you are hardened, your stamina will regenerate if you wait long enough. So if you're out of stamina and you can't roll or dodge, it's a good idea just to harden for keeping you safe to avoid damage, as well as giving you a little bit of time for your stamina to regen. Hardening can be used during any animation, including all types of attacks. Also, if you harden mid combo, you can continue that combo if your harden is broken quickly enough. So you can do a quick one, two, harden once the harden's broken and then finish up with the last attack in that combo. Queuing up attacks when hardening is the most effective way to get quick damage on any type of enemy. What I've started doing more often is using the jump attack and then mid jump hardening and letting the enemy strike me and then landing on them with the big heavy swing. It's a really good way to get a nice hard hit on the enemy quickly. And I've been using this tactic a lot for bosses and some of the harder enemies as kind of a hit and run style. Run in, jump, harden, hit the enemy and then roll away to get some distance. Harden is
isn't the only mechanic that you can use to protect yourself from damage in Mortal Shell. You can also parry and repost. Parrying can be done whenever your seal is glowing, which is most of the time really. If you cannot parry an attack, it will glow reddish and a sound cue will play. This mostly happens in boss fights and the occasional big enemy, but it is well worth understanding what this sound is actually doing. Parrying is really a risk over reward system. It's very easy to mistime a parry as all enemies have different attack animations, but they also have different attack wind up speed. So when they pull their weapon back to swing at you, it's never going to be the same amount of time unless it's obviously the same enemy. You need to time your parry just before the damage lands. If you do land a successful parry, you will get one resolve bar for free. And if you do have resolve, you can use this for the empowered repost. Initially, if you do an empowered repost, it will heal you, but as you progress through the game, you will get additional effects for the empowered repost. As I said, parrying is really a risk over reward system. I have mostly been using parry to get a free heal on some of the easier enemies throughout the game. For the most part, I don't use it during some of the more tense fights as it's just too risky to try and learn the timing on those fights. The next thing to talk about is the mysterious Ballista Zooka that you may have seen on some players backed. The Ballista Zooka is a ranged weapon in Mortal Shell. You can get this weapon by buying the tools from the vendor at the Fulcrum Tower, but obviously make sure you pat the cat as it's very important that you pat the cat to your combat ability. The tools cost about 8,000 tar. Once you have got the tools, head over to the upgrade bench and repair the Ballista Zooka. This item uses large bolts as ammo, which you can find throughout the world, but you can also buy from the vendor. It does a decent amount of damage but it is a terribly slow weapon to reload and it's not really a good thing to use mid combat really at all. If you're still pretty early in the game I would not recommend spending your tar on this until at least the second half of the game or you've cleared at least two of the dungeons. While it's cool it's extremely situational and I've barely used it since I unlocked it. The last thing I'll mention is the Tainted Nectar that you may have found can be used for a free heal as it ejects you from your shell. This item doesn't actually use up your ejection charge for your shell, so you can use this to get a quick free heal, get back in your shell, and then you can go take on enemies, and if you get knocked out of your shell again, you'll still have that extra life. Let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything or if there are any interactions that you have found. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and on Twitch where I stream three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday Australian night times. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. My name is Norza, and I hope you have a great day.